So I welcome uh, Mr. Divyesh Varia uh, for the session uh, on the industrial perspective of open foam. So Divyesh uh, has completed his graduation in mechanical engineering uh, from Gujarat Technological University. He has uh, a work experience in domains like CAD and CAE. He also worked at FOSI as a FOSI Summer Fellow, full-time research assistant, and as an assistant project manager. He is a member of the technical committee of OpenFoam and has developed video tutorials on platforms like uh, Spoken Tutorial Project and YouTube, which is accessible to everyone at free of cost. And currently, he is working on development of technology for the solar silicon manufacturing at Adani Solar. So welcome, welcome, Devish. We're happy to have you here. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, these three days, uh, I taught you a lot, uh, uh, mainly uh, with the um, this hands-on session. So uh, spoken tutorial was, uh, you know, designed that way, uh, in a way that uh, that will let you explore things, uh, and you do uh, when you do uh, things on your own, uh, you, you learn a lot, right? So, uh, okay, so, uh, you know, I'll just start my uh, presentation. So, um, uh, myself, uh, Divyesh Varya, I work at Adani Sola. And uh, here we are doing a lot of uh, uh, simulations. Uh, we, we design a lot of things. Uh, we run simulations. We redesign things. And that's how we are trying to, you know, um, explore the technologies for uh, technologies in uh, making the solar panel that you see on the rooftop. So before, uh, you know, coming on to the solar part, uh, I would like to explain a um, couple of other things. For example, um, uh, so this is uh, our uh, uh, open foam uh, uh, committee, um, wherein we are trying to develop uh, our documentation tutorials. So some of the tutorials are there on um, uh, our uh, spoken tutorials uh, website then there are uh, tutorials available on youtube uh, platform and uh, you can also visit this website called uh, pt.openform.com there you'll also find a lot of uh, pdfs and uh, some explanation on how you can go with the um, uh, how you can learn open form from step by step okay so um First thing uh, that that uh, you would like to know is why should I go into the domain like design and simulations uh, in general? So um, and and especially when you see the numbers uh, of R&D spending uh, throughout the world, right? So uh, India is spending just 0.7 percent of uh, the GDP on R&D. Wherein, if you look at uh, Europe, China, USA, all these countries are spending more than two percent of their GDP. So uh, there is always challenge uh, when you'll uh, go outside the academia and then you'll say that okay, I want to do some uh, CFD work for your company. Okay, so in that case, there will be a question like, why should I go into the CFD? Why should I do the CFD? Or uh, let's say any simulation FEA or uh, why should I design things? There are already a lot of designs available in the market. I just pick um, somebody's design, I manufacture things, and then I'll start the production manufacturing, okay? So uh, uh, there is always a challenge. So first thing um, that you would want to do is, you want to be very clear on why you should do the, the uh, go into this, this sort of domains. So um, first thing is like design and simulation plays major role in uh, research and development. Um, so if you'll see um, European companies, uh, American companies or Chinese companies, they keep on developing things, right? There are already uh, things available in the market, but that's where not, uh, you know, world stops, right? We keep on developing, that's the nature. Uh, that a world is following and those who are spending uh, major um, uh, majority of their part they are the leaders uh, the market leaders so that's where uh, uh, the role of uh, design and simulation comes in the picture so um, uh, 
when we say simulation, what what do we do? Uh, we understand the physics, we understand the chemistry, and then we use mathematics, right? Um, the mathematics that that is there uh, behind the um, these codes, these softwares. Um, so that is actually doing all these works. So that is in the back end. Uh, what we do is we you know we just just click on a couple of things and then it generates the results. Um, uh, first thing is like uh, when you when you see new technologies, right? For example, this solar technology. Um, there are this uh, renewable energy. For example, green hydrogen. So uh, as I was saying, um, uh, the new technologies, right? So new te when, when you see uh, new technologies, when you are working with new technologies, it's always a black box if you don't go into the details uh, or basics uh, or fundamentals uh, of those new technologies. And there are always uncertainty when you are you know, commissioning uh, your manufacturing facility. So at that time, you are always you know, in, the, in the fear factor. You are living in the fear factor. OK, I'll damage my equipment. Um, uh, there could be some safety uh, issues uh, if I'll, I'll go with some different uh, operating condition. And still, you want to try to you know use those optimum operating condition, and you want to run your uh, manufacturing plant uh, in uh, the best way possible, right? And uh, not just about new technologies. If you are, uh, if if we if you look at the existing technologies, there are always a scope of improvement. Um, uh, with this existing technologies. So we, we always want to, you know, improvise whatever we have. If you look, just look at the uh, design of the pump, there are a lot of uh, designs available. And still there are companies who are spending a lot of money on the R&D uh, because they want to improvise uh, as per uh, the customer need or their need. And that's how, you know, uh, that's where uh, we uh, we do simulations. We we figure out um, we change some uh, uh, design parameters, and then we figure out that okay, uh, with this design, we will get the optimum output. And that's that's where we see uh, how uh, we can become a market leader. Um, um, if you look at uh, any company, any European company, U.S. company who is uh, spending good uh, amount of money on their R&D, um, they are always you know, uh, thinking uh, three, four, five steps ahead of the market. And um, they introduce things to the market, and that's how they, they stay as the market leader. Now, uh, um, this says, if I'll ask, uh, what are the technologies that you, that you hear uh, in the manufacturing, especially? If we don't look into the IT sector, wherein you know these days AI ML is leading, um, uh, these technologies uh, are uh, electrical vehicles and renewable energy. You will see everywhere that you know new these electrical vehicles are coming in. People are trying to figure out uh, and uh, uh, optimize things. They want to optimize. Is one of the factory. Uh, uh, they are trying to uh, build the charging station. And they are trying to do a lot in this sector as well as in the renewable energies and green hydro hydrogen. So, wind is something that was there, but uh, in the field of solar. And we'll see a lot of um, new. Um, so uh, here, I um, uh, build that entire uh, this thing um, during your schools and uh, in your colleges. Uh, that there is this solar manufacturing chain. How how we make uh, how we convert uh, the quartz uh, uh, and the the silicon that is there uh, uh, on the surface of the earth. How we convert the module. So I'll just walk you through. Uh, this, at Adani Solar, actually, we are trying to. Uh, we are the first, one of the first Indian company who are trying to establish this entire uh, solar manufacturing chain through backward integration of technologies. So, um, 
right now um if we if we just look at the uh, manufacturing the solar silicon manufacturing chain we we start with the quartzite so uh, we know that the quartzite uh, that is there on the surface of the earth we we mine it and um uh, the but the problem with the, the quartz is uh, that um, it has sio2 a chemical property right silicon dioxide and uh, um we we need to extract that particular um, from uh, silicon dioxide to silicon so um that is the first part so for that you know we use the submerged aqua furnace i'll come to this later but uh, we first extract that silicon we remove the ox uh, oxygen uh, from the quartzite later uh, we use that silicon metal as a raw material and then we purify it so uh, here when we'll extract the silicon there are a lot of impurities and we know that um to make the silicon um, a good semiconductor we need to remove um impurities like uh, generally the 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 purity of this sort of silicon is um uh, 6n uh we call it a uh, one ppm of uh, impurity should be there it should be less than that and uh of that level we 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 try to purify the silicon later we uh, take that particular silicon um as a raw material it's a polycrystalline silicon so uh, either we we can make a, a solar cell using that polycrystalline silicon but that that technology is uh, quite outdated and now the world is moving into the uh, uh, single crystal uh, silicon so um uh, once again we take that polycrystalline silicon um the best purity of silicon we again you know um go through a purification process and we make it as a single crystal silicon also a couple of uh, images as well at the end what is this single crystal silicon then we take that single crystal silicon it's like a big rod um with some diameter and with some length later we slice it make it a wafer and uh you see on the solar panel there are this square um blue boxes right uh, blue wafers are there so we use that um wafer and we um we make it a uh, cell so there are a lot of uh, on the surface of these cells we need to um uh, add some material for example n type and p type doping you may have heard so for that we need to add boron phosphorus this sort of uh, chemicals and later we um, uh, using uh, this cells we place it on a pv module we make some connections using those silver wires and that's where um, it becomes you know ready to provide the power from uh, from uh, the solar rays uh, or photons that that impact or inject on the surface of this panel so that is basically how you know we uh, the journey starts of the uh, silicon from quartzite being as a sio2 to uh, generate the power from uh, pv module so here uh, uh, this was just an uh, just an intro introduction of the solar silicon manufacturing chain from now on i'll explain um, what are the things that you can do or you can offer so instead of going into the physics i i would like you to see it as a um, as a um, a prob problem identification uh, process so when you go into the industry uh, what, what kind of problem that is already there uh, that you can uh, solve or you can uh, offer to the companies um and uh, that that's where you know uh, the first step starts all other things running simulation designing and then um uh, offering some solutions are uh, the latest steps but here the first thing 
uh, that you need to do is you know identify the problem right so uh, first thing is uh, baking a metallurgical grade silicon so here uh, uh, wherever uh, you know if there is any question just unmute and uh, you can ask there's no issue with that so a metallurgical grade silicon um the manufacturing of this silicon metallurgical grade silicon uh, is uh, through a uh, submerged ag furnace so there is a a furnace if uh, there is any anybody from metallurgical depart uh, background uh, they must know about this terminology submerged ag furnace so what is submerged ag furnace basically um, you see it as a like there is a shell and inside that shell there are three electrodes and we pass some energy um, uh, electrical energy through uh, those electrode and that uh, electrode will uh, convert that particular electrical energy uh, into a thermal energy so here you can see on the right hand side uh, this this two rod you can see uh they are the electrodes and uh, from here uh, slowly those uh, the electrical energy will start uh, generating this uh, temperature difference there will be this arc and slowly slowly temperature will rise and uh, the the quartzite that is there around the electrode that will react with the the carbon carbon is also one raw material Uh, it could be uh, in the form of coal or charcoal um or uh, food chips uh, it could be anything so uh, the sio2 in the quartzite uh, will react with the carbon and uh, as a, a metal and this carbon dioxide will escape from this um the the furnace and after some purification processes we release it into the uh, air so um, that is overall uh, how metallurgical grade silicon is produced so here you can see on the right hand side this uh, this temperature profiles slowly starts increasing um and here a sort of melt pool will generate so this kind of uh, um uh, simulation we can do and uh, uh, we can check uh, if i'm uh, supplying let's say uh, 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 if if i uh, my transformer capacity of uh, is let's say a 24 megawatt then uh, i i don't want to use uh, this furnace for with uh, with full power or full capacity because my uh, later on whatever equipments are there are like some 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 of the equipments are under the maintenance or uh, uh, let's say something happened and because of that those are in the maintenance so i want to reduce the power i don't want to use uh, with uh, uh, this uh, full capacity so here I, i'll check i'll give some a different electrical source for example reduce the power and that will slowly decrease the, the the entire process will slow down and this uh melting thing will uh, uh will also slow down and that's how we see the the output will be um lesser so that is um one thing that we can do um so here if you break down the problem uh, there are chemical reactions that you can add uh, the entire bed that is there this entire shell it's a porous media sort of problem because quartzite and coal and wood chips if you will put everything together it will become a porous media then a joule heating problem uh, how much uh, voltage you are providing and what temperature it so um, basically after this uh, metallurgical grade silicon um uh, what we do is we purify it uh, we make it so pure that the impurity is a 0.0001% um, in the silicon so there are a lot of you know uh, this chemical processes 
it's like a huge uh, chemical plant uh, wherein there are fluidized bed reactors, there are columns, there are a lot of things. And at the end, uh, special equipment is that uh, that is called Siemens reactor. Uh, and that's where this uh, chemical vapor deposition happens. So here you can see um, this is uh, how this uh, um, Siemens reactor will look like. Uh, this rod you can see U U tube type rod. These are the uh, seed uh, silicon. So when you'll pass through some um, uh, silicon with uh, that metallurgical silicon through the bottom of this uh, reactor, it will react with uh, the some gases, and uh, silicon will again, uh, you know, start depositing on the surface of this uh, uh, seed crystals and uh, um, the impurities will react with the gases and that will uh, come out of this uh, uh, re uh, Siemens reactor. Other than that, uh, here the, the main physics is uh, maintaining the temperature. Uh, the temperature should be very uniform throughout the process. If the temperature is not uniform um, on this uh, SID uh, crystal, then it will form a popcorn sort of structure. So you'll see some, some uh, bubbles uh, formed inside the, uh, on top of this uh, seed crystal. And the problem with those uh, popcorns uh, is, uh, popcorn structure is that uh, some impurities can, um, you know, trap into that, uh, that bubble and that will stay forever inside those bubbles. So that's what not we want. Um, and other than that is, um, you know, uh, uh, this process is very costly process because it requires enormous amount of energy, energy as well as uh, uh, it's very time consuming process. So uh, you are running your reactor for eight, eight to 10 days and you are uh, spending a lot of energy on this and your, uh, the end result is not that good. That's waste of your money as well as your energy. So that's uh, how uh, we basically create a polycrystalline silicon. Then uh, uh, there is this single crystal silicon. So here you can see um, this is some uh, reactor, something. Uh, let me just play the video so it will give you the catch. So um, basically, um, uh, this is the reactor, and you can see slowly from this melt, um, this uh, crystal, single crystal will come out. And this entire process is happening um, in a furnace. So it's not a fixed uh, furnace. The furnace, uh, furnace outside, and this crucible you can see here, they are rotating. Um, so if the furnace is rotating on the clockwise direction, the inside of this um, crystal, uh, this uh, crucible is rotating uh, counterclockwise direction and uh, solidification happening, then some heat transfer happening, radiation happening again to uh, capture the impurity on the surface of this crucible. Uh, we add electromagnetic force, uh, on from side so your uh, metal impurities other metal impurities are not uh, uh, sticking uh, with this uh, uh, single crystal structure so um, this is also again a very like three four days it will take three four days to come out uh, uh, a big crystal with the diameter that that you want so here again uh, the concept of conjugate uh, heat transfer radiation electromagnetism melting solidification all these things are there so actually you can uh, either you'll have to spend a lot of money on um, different software different code or you can do it uh, in open form so um, that is a biggest advantage with open form that you can implement all this physics um, um, uh, there uh, without spending any money on the software. Other than that, uh, after uh, taking this uh, uh, silicon ingot, we need to make it a cell. So here you can see um, 
um, some gases are passing passing by over the surface of this um, silicon uh, silicon wafers or cells and uh, we deposit phosphorus boron sort of thing and then um, uh, there are some other layers and that's how you know it becomes a, a cell solar cell so here again uniform deposition of uh, this uh, the dopants that you are uh, depositing th that is something very crucial here um again um, after depositing that there is this diffusion that you need to diffuse that uh, that um, of, let's say phosphorus so you need to diffuse that on the surface of the um uh, silicon uh, there are some other things for example pcvd plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition all these processes are there in the uh, in the making this uh, your solar panel um, uh, best efficient after that uh, this um, after making this pv module you want to make sure that whatever solar radiation is um, uh, um, exerting on the surface of this solar panel is how much of uh, a power it is generating as well as uh, the wind load uh, whether this panel structure is uh, strong enough to sustain uh, in, the, in the condition where you are putting it in. So this wind load is something uh, which is very uh, important. So this sort of simulations uh, we could do uh, using open phone. Um, other than that, uh, I, I would like to just conclude uh, my presentation uh, with this uh, uh, great news that uh, uh, we at Adani Solar have as just unveiled India's first biggest uh, silicon ingot. So you can see the, the ingot that I was talking about, um, a single crystal silicon. So uh, it, it looks something like this. And uh, later you, you cut it, um, uh, cut the excess part. So um, uh, basically, um, this is that ingot that uh, we, we just unveiled. So um, it's India's first biggest uh, uh, silicon ingot. Uh, you can see uh, this is basically the purest uh, silicon uh, metal uh, that we can use for uh, cell manufacturing. First, what we do is we uh, take this uh, um, ingot or uh, say a single crystalline silicon we slice the top part side part make it a square and then uh, after uh, um, after uh, making it go through some processes of doping uh, it will become uh, uh, it, it is ready to uh, generate the power when when we exert uh, uh, a solar load or photons on the surface of the silicon so um, uh, uh, here, uh, on this, uh, uh, with this message, I would like to conclude the com conclude my uh, talk. If there are any questions, I I think I'm not able to see all the questions. So even from my previous talk, if there was any question, if you guys have any other question, right now you can unmute. I would be happy to answer. Uh, I I think uh, there are no questions. Yes, uh, I also think but, so. Yeah, if you, if you yeah, I, I, if if anybody has any questions later on, uh, they can also ping me on uh, LinkedIn. I would I'm happy to answer those.